Our main tool to forecast the weather is a model of the atmosphere, a computer model. And we start off by setting that up using a whole lot of observations from around the world to represent what the atmosphere is doing now. And then the model calculates forward in time, as you can see here in this example, how the weather will evolve. So here we have a big storm, one of the storms that hit the UK in the winter of 2013. Um, with lots of heavy rain and tight eyes of ours indicating strong winds. Uh, so that gives you a lovely picture of what might happen. Unfortunately, it's not quite as simple as that because the evolution of that model is very sensitive to small errors in how we started. So what we actually do as well is we, instead of just running the model once, we run a whole set of forecasts. So here we can see 12 separate forecasts for the winds from that same storm. And you can see immediately differences there, but if we just highlight, zoom in on uh, just a couple of those forecasts. You can see here that the strongest winds are in quite different places and, and a different shape in these two forecasts, which of course is very important information to users who are interested in what damage that storm might cause. One of the powers of this tool is it lets us look at what the uncertainty is on any one particular forecast. Some days, they'll all, all the different forecasts will be similar and you can be very confident. Other days, uh, they'll be much more different and one can only really look at the risks and uncertainties associated with the forecast, the risks particularly of high impact weather. But on, in a broad sense at least, um, we have useful skill in predictability out to about 10 days ahead, particularly looking at the broader scale weather patterns. Rather less when one starts looking at this sort of very fine detail that we're looking at here in terms of the strong winds. But, that's, the, that's the, the broad idea, up to a couple of weeks.